Senator Seddick, Grange Research and Development Corporation. Questions? Senator Seward. Almost, Mr. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll start off where I left off with the department when I was asking questions about the liability. No, um, Sorry, have you looked at issues no. around liability on um, contamination of conventional crops by GM crops? Have you done any further work on, beyond what the department has or hasn't done? Um, Look, not that I'm aware of. I'm, I'm not quite sure of the context of your question. I didn't okay. hear the earlier questions I beg, I about... I beg your pardon. OK. Yeah. So we were... It was stemming from um, discussions we were... Or questions we were asking around uh, the Steve Marsh case. Right. Um, <coughs> however, I wasn't specifically asking about that. What I was asking about is any work the department had done to look at those issues around uh, liability. And given that the uh, GRDC has been funding work on... Uh, GM crops, have you looked at that side of the, the process around what happens if, as has happened, um, conventional crops are contaminated and it has economic impacts on those particular growers that are contaminated? Right, OK. I understand your question now. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator, look, uh, as you know, GRDC is involved in doing research and mm -hmm. development and certainly from time to time we will investigate and use GM technologies. In a lot of cases, we actually use it as a proof of concept. So we'll often look at a gene uh, in terms of its uh, impact on a plant and then at, in a research phase, and then we will look for a natural variant of that gene within the natural population, which we they, then can select so that we can actually, actually produce a non-GM product. Uh, certainly from a research point of view, yes, we do look at the liability associated with um, researching GMs, mm. and we certainly abide and make sure our partners abide yeah. by all the OGTR regulations. But that is a consideration we take on when we're doing the research and when we're selecting a research partner, is to make sure they do have the facilities that are the correct standard, uh, uh, and that the risks of any sort of contamination are absolutely minimised in the research phase. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for that. I'm, I'm wondering if you look at the bigger picture for, you know, if the research, um, particularly for the side where you, where you are actually then researching GM crops, if they become, then get to the commercial, the point of commercial release, whether you've done any work around that particular side of the process? Uh, to date, GRDC hasn't been involved in the, the release of a, um, a commercial release of a GM product, uh, but certainly the large biotech companies um, that have been involved in that look at that very, very carefully and very seriously. And part of their strategy is always to make sure that they get their events deregulated in a whole range of different countries and um, uh, marketplaces to minimise that risk of uh, unintended uh, contamination. So, sorry, I missed the word you said. Get to get it deregulated? Did you say? That's correct. To get it registered in other in our marketplaces. To so, get what? Registered, sorry. So when, a, when you have a GM event, it needs to be... Oh, I beg your pardon. ...deregulated okay. in the markets in which that product is going to be sold. Yeah. And okay. certainly they do a lot of work to make sure that's done well. Yep. OK. So what do they do... When you talk about deregulated, do you mean so that would, would enable the export or import of the particular um, product that's been contaminated? Is that what you mean? When a... For example, GM canola is exported mm. um, to another country. There needs to be approvals gained in that country to allow that to be imported. Okay, right. That, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, could you take on notice, please, and up, um, provide me with a and provide me with an updated list of the GM work that you're currently funding? Certainly can. That'd be appreciated. Yep. Thank you. Um, do you do an assessment um, of uh, the uptake of GM? Um, crops um, amongst farmers? We have done uh, some work looking at the uptake of canola and looking at uh, the impact of GM canola and its benefits and its costs in a farming systems context. How long ago did you do that? Uh, that work is um, we've done over a number of years and yep. is due for release uh, Friday week, the 7th of March. Uh, Friday week, sorry, 7th of March. 7th of March. Okay, March. thank you. Have you done any other crops? Um, not to my knowledge. I'd need to check and if, confirm If you could that. take that on yep. notice, that would be appreciated. Thank you. 
Um, as part of that analysis, have you carried out an economic analysis? We've certainly looked at the economic, social and agronomic impacts of the technology. Okay. Of just for canola? GM canola. GM canola. And we've looked at it in the terms of GM canola versus non-GM canola. Okay. So it's just limited to that particular crop, the economic the the, analysis? The economic done. and the agronom agronomic, social and environmental. Okay. Thank you. Um, when you've been doing that, um, have you done the costs and benefits um, looking at the impacts on, for example, organic crops? And I know we get then into the issue around contamination. But... We've looked at the issue in that report of coexistence. Okay. So how do you describe coexistence? Uh, GM and non-GM being able to uh, exist in the same landscape. Okay. And does that include, and I'm thinking of some particular organisations that think in order for organic to coexist, they need the certification of what is organic needs to change? There's certainly, um, there's certainly a, an issue around um, adventitious presence and uh, it certainly would be a practical solution if um, there was some consideration of what would be reasonable and acceptable adventitious presen presence. So in, order, in so in order to facilitate GM, organics has to change? And, and have you done a survey to see what consumers think about a potential change of what is organic? Uh, we haven't, certainly haven't done a survey of consumers in terms of how they perceive um, organic. We haven't, we haven't done that to the best of my knowledge. And the second, first part of your question? Um, so is, the, is that the only way this, that the uh, GRDC sees that there could be coexistence is organics accepting some level of contamination? Look, if, if it, that would certainly be a practical solution. Thank you. And, and can, I, but can I just say, Senator Seward, I, from my interaction with people in the organic sector, not all of them <coughs> oppose um, GM and see GM as possibly part of their regime. And so I think the term contamination might also be a little provocative in that sense. So not all people involved in the organic sector are anti-GM, and I think that probably needs to be part of the conversation. Yeah. yeah. A lot that are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but there are quite a few also who are not. Yeah, well, perhaps we need to change the definition of rather than changing what standard asks for different for organics, maybe you have a different process or different name for that. It becomes a philosophical perspective that's as right. much as anything else. And that's what's important to consumers too, is to so that they know what's in their food. Um, which is then, I come back to that question um, around, is, has there been any work done about what consumers actually would like to see in organic food? Look, I'm not aware of any research that we've done in that regard. I'm sure there's been research done, but I'm not, I'm not aware of us actually supporting that okay. research. So do you do, because um, it, it may be that the question I'm asking is, is not the appropriate question First off, given that you may not do any research with consumers on other product, on other uh, crops either, so we have do, you done any consumer research? We certainly do. Well, about 60 to 70 percent of the grain crop is actually exported, and a lot of that goes up into Asian markets, but also over into the Middle East. We obviously take a very strong interest in what yeah. those markets expect from Australian grain and the quality attributes. Yep. that they want from Australian grain. Okay. So we certainly have, we have a program, one of our themes is meeting market requirements. Okay. So obviously we want to make sure we're producing, our growers are producing the right product for the various markets that Australian grain goes to. So we do quite a lot of work in that regard. Okay. We also are involved in actually promoting to the, to the Australian community the health benefits associated with both, both grain and pulse crops. Okay, thank you. But that so far, that hasn't included that area around what people see is, A, do people want organic food? And B, um, what they think about the standards of organic food, including GMOs? As I said earlier, I'm not aware of us actually supporting okay. any of that consumer research that you refer to. Okay, thank you. Um, what about in your in um, export markets? Has any of your work looked at that um, issue? Again, uh, to the best of my knowledge, no, we haven't actually looked at consumer preferences for organic versus non-organic. We've looked much more at the 
quality attributes that those markets are looking for from Australian grain, which tend to be m more around the performance of wheat, for example, in their manufacturing processes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the review that you, um, it was recently announced, can, um, the one that uh, Marsden Jacobs is doing, what t what's the time frame for the completion of that And review? so they're looking at having a report back to the steering committee um, by uh, the end of June this year. And what's the scope of that? Is there terms of reference? I, I haven't, I've got a general piece about it. I don't have the terms of reference for it. Is right, there a okay. terms of reference? Look, the, the, the first thing I should say, and it may be more appropriate for the department to answer this question rather than myself, but this is a review which has been um, steered by a steering committee that is made up of industry mm. and also our two key stakeholders, industry and government. And I guess it's arisen out of the fact that we've been around now more than 20 years. Mm. And the question is, is the current governance structure as an legal structure under which we operate, is it still appropriate? It's been appropriate for the last 20 years, but is it the most appropriate structure for us going forward? It's an independent committee. It's made up of industry and, and government. Uh, they're guiding the process. Uh, yeah. Sorry? Uh, just about, just want to finish that, yeah, yeah, sure. that, just that particular area. So the, the governance, it, so the review is essentially around governance and looking into the future rather than Exactly, and if you look over the history of the RDCs, uh, when they started in 1991, all of the RDCs, all 15, were statutory authorities yep. within government, and I think currently we've got four or five that are still statutory authorities within government. The others will move to other models. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thanks, Senator.